Today we will discuss the 11th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. This chapter is entitled The Universal Form. In this chapter, Krishna shows his universal form to Arjuna on Arjuna's request. In the previous chapter, Krishna explained to Arjuna about the various physical representations in which he is spread throughout the world. Now, in this chapter, in the beginning, Arjuna says that I have heard your instruction on confidential spiritual matters, which you have so kindly delivered unto me, and my illusion is now dispelled. So, Arjuna is saying his illusion is over. This means Arjuna no longer thinks Krishna is an ordinary human being. He doesn't think Krishna is just another friend of his. But he now understands Krishna as the source of everything. Arjuna is very enlightened and is glad that he has got a great friend like Krishna. He is now convinced that Krishna is the cause of all causes and is present in everyone's heart as the super soul. Arjuna now further says to Krishna, I have heard from you in detail about the appearance and disappearance of every living being as realized through your inexhaustible glories. Actually, Krishna is the source of everything in this world. And Arjuna has heard of this from Krishna in detail. Arjuna further knows that in spite of Krishna being the source of everyone and everything, he is also completely aloof from them. Krishna's personality is not lost Although he is present everywhere, that is the inconceivable opulence of Krishna, which Arjuna admits now he has thoroughly understood. Now Arjuna makes a request to Krishna. His request is, O greatest of all personalities, O supreme form, Though I see here before me your actual position, I yet wish to see how you have entered into the entire universe. I want to see that form of yours. So Arjuna has got a very specific request from Krishna. And he also says, Arjuna also says, that uh, if you think that I am able to behold your universal form, O master of all mystic power, then kindly show me that universal form. Now why is Arjuna asking Krishna to show the universal form? It is explained by Srila Prabhupada that the Lord has entered into this universe by his personal representation as the super soul. This is what Krishna explained in the end of the previous chapter. Now, as far as Arjuna is concerned, he is inspired by the statements of Krishna, but in order to convince others in the future, especially those who may think that Krishna is an ordinary person, Arjuna desires to see Krishna actually in his universal form. The way Krishna has entered into this universe, that particular form Arjuna wants to see. And having entered, Krishna is acting from within the universe, although he is completely apart from this universe. So this is Krishna's mystic opulence and Arjuna wishes to see that. So, um, Krishna, 
Krishna replies to Arjuna, My dear Arjuna, Behold my opulences, hundreds of thousands of very divine forms, multicolored like the sea. You can see here the different forms of Adityas, Rudras, and all the Devatas. Adityas and Rudras are different categories of Devatas. There are many different categories of Devatas. So he is able to see all the categories of Devatas. As well as, Krishna is showing, whatever you may desire to see in the future. This universal form can show you whatever you desire to see now, as well as whatever you desire to see in the future. Krishna is telling, behold the many things which no one has ever seen or heard before. No one can see, Srila Prabhupada explains, the entire universe sitting in one place. Even the most advanced scientist cannot see what is going on in other parts of the universe sitting in one place. Whereas, by Krishna's mercy, Arjuna will be shown the entire universe uh, in one place. Uh, we have to remember, Arjuna is sitting on the chariot and Krishna has agreed to become the chariot driver of Arjuna. They are on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. So, Krishna is giving Arjuna the power to see the universal form. But Arjuna cannot see this universal form uh, without Krishna giving him the power to see. That means Arjuna cannot see with the present eyes. Therefore, Krishna tells Arjuna, I will give you divine eyes by which you can see my mystic opulence. Speaking thus, Lord Krishna, who is the Supreme Lord of all mystic powers, displayed his universal form to Arjuna. Arjuna wanted to see the universal form to substantiate Krishna's statement that Krishna has entered into this universe even though he is aloof from it, so that in future, people could understand that Krishna not only spoke about having entered into the universe, Krishna not only philosophically explained that, but Krishna also demonstrated by actually showing that particular form in which he has entered into the universe. Now, what did Arjuna see in that universal form after Krishna gave him the divine vision? Arjuna saw uh, unlimited mouths, unlimited eyes. The form was decorated with divine dazzling ornaments covered with many different dresses. Krishna was garlanded gloriously and there were many scents smeared all over his body. Everything was magnificent, everything was all expanding, and everything was unlimited. This was what Arjuna saw. Now, this description here helps us to understand that there is no limit to the number of hands, mouths, legs, etc. Both Arjuna and Krishna are sitting on the chariot where Arjuna saw the universal form. Others on the battlefield, they could not see this form because Krishna gave the vision only to Arjuna. Sitting on his chariot, Arjuna could see the whole universe, but no one could understand what is going on between Krishna and Arjuna. Then, bewildered and astonished at seeing this universal form, Arjuna began to pray to the Lord with folded hands. 
offering obeisances to the Supreme Lord. Now Arjuna tells Krishna, My dear Krishna, I see assembled together in your body all the devatas and various other living beings. I see Brahma sitting on the lotus flower as well as Lord Shiva and many sages and divine serpents. Now we should understand what Arjuna is seeing in that universal form. He is seeing Brahma. Brahma is the first creature in the entire universe. And Brahma actually is seated on a lotus flower. This lotus flower has uh, come out of the navel of Lord Vishnu, who is at the bottom of the universe. Because the lotus flower has come out of his navel, he is called Padmanabha. Padma, the lotus flower, has come out of his nabhi, his uh, navel. So, this Vishnu is also called Padmanabha. And Brahma could see the navel of Padmanabha, which is the bottom of the universe, until the topmost part of the universe where Brahma is seated on the lotus flower. That means Arjuna could see the beginning and the end of the entire universe sitting in one place on the chariot, on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Then Arjuna describes further what he is seeing. O Lord of the universe, I see in your universal body many, many forms, bellies, mouths, eyes, expanded without limit. There is no end, there is no beginning and there is no middle to all of it, all of this. Your form adorned with various crowns, clubs, discs is difficult to see because of the glaring effulgence. And this effulgence is immeasurable like the sun. Then Arjuna describes what is Krishna's actual position. He says, you are the supreme primal objective. You are the best in all the universes. You are the inexhaustible supreme lord. You are the oldest. You are the maintainer of religion. You are the eternal personality of God. You are the origin without beginning, middle or end. You have numberless arms and the sun and moon are among your unlimited eyes. By your own radiance, you are heating the whole universe. The effulgence of that universal form was like thousands of suns rising simultaneously. We can't sometimes bear the, the sunshine coming from one sun. So how much more would that heat be uh, generated by the universal form of Krishna, which was like millions of suns? Although you are one, you are spread throughout the sky and the planets and all space in between. I behold this terrible form. I see the residents on the different planets are perplexed. All the devatas are surrendering and entering into you. They are very much afraid and with folded hands they are singing the Vedic hymns. The different forms of Lord Shiva, the Adityas, the Vasus, the Satyas, the Vishwedevas, the two Ashwins, the Maruts, the forefathers, the Gandharvas, the Yakshas, the Asuras, the Siddhas, all are beholding you in wonder. These are all different categories of Devadas. O mighty armed one, all the planets with their Devatas are disturbed at seeing your many faces, your many eyes, your arms, bellies, legs and your terrible teeth. As they are disturbed, so am I. O Lord Vishnu, I can no longer maintain my equilibrium. 
seeing your radiant colors fill the skies and beholding your eyes and mouths, I am afraid. <clears throat> now Arjuna is praying to Krishna, O refuge of the worlds, please be gracious to me. I cannot keep my balance seeing your blazing death-like faces and awful teeth. In all directions, I am completely bewildered. <clears throat> now, something significant that Krishna shows to Arjuna in this universal form. Arjuna says, I am seeing all the sons of Dhritarashtra along with their allied kings and Bhishma, Drona, Karana and all our soldiers as well are rushing into your mouths, their heads smashed by your fearful teeth. So, Srila Prabhupada explains, in a previous verse, the Lord promised to show Arjuna things he would be very much interested in seeing. Now Arjuna sees that the leaders of the opposite party, Bhishma, Drona, Karna and all the sons of Dhritarashtra and the soldiers on the Kaurava side as well as some of Arjuna's own soldiers, all are being completely destroyed. This is an indication to Arjuna that Arjuna will emerge victorious in the battle, despite heavy losses on both sides. It is also mentioned here that Bhishma, who is supposed to be unconquerable, he will also be smashed. So also Karna. Not only will great warriors on the Kaurava side will be killed, but even some of the greatest warriors on the Pandava side also will be killed. So Arjuna continues to describe, as the rivers flow into the sea, all these great warriors enter your blazing mouths and perish. Then Arjuna describes the phenomenon. I see all people rushing with full speed into your mouths as moths dash into a blazing fire. O oh Vishnu, I see you devouring all people in your flaming mouths and covering the universe with your immeasurable rays. You are seen scorching the worlds. O oh Lord of Lords, so fierce of form, please tell me who you are. Now Arjuna is completely terrified at seeing the universal form. He doesn't understand what is actually going on. So he tells Krishna, I offer my obeisances unto you. Please be gracious to me. I do not know what your mission is and I desire to hear about it. So then the Supreme Lord replies to Arjuna, Time I am, destroyer of the worlds, and I have come to engage all people. With the exception of you, the Pandavas, all the soldiers here on both sides will be killed. So, the Supreme Lord has declared his mission is to kill all the soldiers on both sides with the exception of the Pandavas. And his form is a form of time, Kala. Time is described as the greatest destroyer of the entire world. Although Arjuna knew Krishna was his friend, although Arjuna knew Krishna was the Supreme Lord, he was nonetheless puzzled by the various forms exhibited by Krishna in his display of his universal form. Therefore, he asked about the actual mission of the devastating force. So, it is to be understood that the form of time is being displayed by Krishna in order to give assurance to Arjuna that uh, even though Arjuna may decline to fight, because Arjuna was not in favor of the fight, still 
the Lord is saying that even if Arjuna did not fight, every one of the others other than the Pandavas would be destroyed because that was Krishna's plan. Even if Arjuna stopped fighting, they would die in some other way. Death cannot be checked. Because time is destruction and everything will be vanquished by the desire of the Supreme Lord in his former's time. That is the law of nature. So Krishna further instructs Arjuna, therefore, get up and prepare to fight. After conquering your enemies, you will enjoy a flourishing kingdom. They are already put to death by my arrangement and you, O Arjuna, can be but an instrument in the fight. So Srila Prabhupada explains, the whole world is going on according to the plan of the Supreme Lord Krishna. But foolish persons who have no knowledge think that nature is going on without any plan. And they make their own so-called plans. But there is a specific plan being carried out in this world by the Supreme Lord Krishna. What is that plan? This entire creation is a chance for all of us who are created beings to go back to Krishna's personal abode, which is our original home. As long as we are bound up in this world because of our lording mentality, we cannot get out of this material world. But anyone who understands Krishna's plan and cultivates Krishna consciousness, such a person is the most intelligent person. So the creation and destruction of this world is going on under the guidance of the Supreme Lord. Thus, the battle of Kurukshetra, which was fought according to the plan of Krishna, it is also according to Krishna's desire that in this battle, except for the Pandavas, everyone is going to be killed. Therefore, uh, if one is situated in Krishna consciousness, then one's life is perfect because the ultimate destination of everyone who is Krishna conscious is simply to go to their original home, the personal abode of Krishna. That's where we all belong. So Krishna reassures Arjuna, all the great warriors, Drona, Bhishma, Jayadratha, Karna are already destroyed. Simply fight and you will vanquish your enemies. After hearing these words from the Supreme Lord Krishna, Arjuna became even more fearful. Uh, he offered obeisances to Krishna and uh, he began to speak with a faltering voice. Now, what now Arjuna is going to speak are actually prayers offered by Arjuna. In the entire Bhagavad Gita, this is the only portion where there are prayers offered to Krishna. These are 11 verses uh, of prayers offered by Arjuna to Krishna. Arjuna's prayers are as follows. O Krishna, the world becomes joyful upon hearing your name and thus everyone becomes attached to you. Although the perfected beings offer you their respectful homage, the demons are afraid and they are fleeing here and there. All this is rightly done. Then Arjuna prays, O great one who stands even above Brahma, you are the original master. Why should they not offer their homage unto you? O limitless one, refuge of the universe, you are the invincible source, the cause of all causes transcendental to this material creation. You are the original personality of Godhead. 
you are the only refuge of this entire world you know everything and you are all that is knowable you are above the material gunas all limitless form you spread everywhere throughout the whole universe you are air you are the fire you are water you are the moon you are the supreme controller and the great grandfather thus i offer my respectful obeisances unto you a thousand times and again and yet again now shila prabhupad explains why is krishna being addressed as a great grandfather that's because krishna is the father of brahma brahma is the first created a uh, being in this entire universe krishna is the father of brahma and brahma has created the human beings uh through his son manu so brahma becomes the grandfather of all human beings and brahma's father krishna becomes the great grandfather of all human beings that's how arjuna is addressing krishna as the great grandfather then arjuna continues to offer his prayers obeisances from the front from behind from all sides o unbounded power you are the master of limitless might you are present everywhere and thus you are everything arjuna is completely bewildered in that bewildered state he is repeatedly offering obeisances to krishna out of great respect for krishna's a uh, greatness which krishna has displayed by showing his universal form uh, arjuna further says i have in the past address you as o krishna o yadava o my friend without knowing your glories please forgive whatever i may have done in madness or in love i have dishonored you many times for relaxing while lying on the same bed or eating together you should remember that uh, arjuna is krishna's friend so as a friend they might have had very casual dealings but arjuna is now regretting i didn't know who krishna was actually that krishna is so great i did not know his greatness to this extent now i'm realizing that i might have offended krishna in so many casual dealings so therefore he is requesting praying to krishna please excuse me for all my offenses then he is further praying you are the father of the complete universe the worshipable chief the spiritual master no one is equal to you nor can anyone be greater than you within the three worlds you are immeasurably great you are the supreme lord to be worshiped by every living being thus i fall down to offer you my respects and ask your mercy please tolerate the wrongs that i might have done to you and bear with me as a father bears with a son or a friend with his friend or a lover with his beloved after seeing this universal form which i have never seen before i am gladdened but at the same time my mind is disturbed with fear therefore please bestow your grace upon me and reveal again your form as the personality of god it o lord of lords o universal lord i wish to see you in your four arm form with crown with club wheel conch lotus flower in your hands i long to see that form of yours now this is the prayers offered by these are the prayers offered by arjuna now as opposed to the universal form which is a fearsome form extremely fearsome uh, krishna's uh, four arm form that of uh, narayana is a very pleasing form for the eyes so uh, krishna responds to arjuna's prayers krishna says 
my dear arjuna happily do i show you this universal form within the material world by my internal potency it is krishna's own personal energy which krishna uses for his purposes exclusively using that spiritual potency krishna has shown arjuna his universal form and krishna says no one before you has ever seen this unlimited and glaringly effulgent form now why does krishna say no one before arjuna has ever seen that that's because krishna says o arjuna no one before you has ever seen this form because neither by studying the vedas nor by performing sacrifices nor by charities nor by any other pious activities can this form be seen as you are seeing only you have seen this form now shrila prabhupada explains even if a person performs sacrifices undergoes different austerities he gives charity he studies the vedas or performs any other type of pious activities he cannot see the universal form of krishna if he is not a devotee like arjuna so only devotees like arjuna can see this universal form now prabhupar also explains those who are impersonalists that means those who are worshipers of the formless brahman they also cannot see the universal form why because they are not devotees they sometimes imagine that they are seeing the universal form but from bhagavad gita we can understand even they cannot see the universal form because they are not devotees there are many persons shila prabhupar explains who create incarnations they falsely claim an ordinary human being to be an incarnation but this is all foolishness we should follow the principles of bhagavad gita otherwise there is no possibility of getting perfect spiritual knowledge the followers of false incarnation may claim that they have also seen the universal form but that is not acceptable because it's clearly stated here unless one becomes a devotee of krishna one cannot see the universal form so we should not be misled by false claims by people who are not devotees of krishna now krishna wants to pacify arjuna who has become terrified upon seeing the universal form so what does krishna say your mind has been perturbed upon seeing this horrible feature of mine now let it be finished become free from all disturbances with a peaceful mind you can now see the form you desire to see so then what did krishna do while speaking thus to arjuna krishna displayed his real four armed form the pleasing four handed form and at last he showed krishna his beautiful two handed form as krishna thus encouraging the fearful arjuna when arjuna saw krishna's two handed form he said seeing this human like form so very beautiful my mind is now completely pacified and i am restored to my original nature now this means krishna sorry arjuna has got a relationship with krishna in krishna's two handed form and seeing krishna's two handed form very very beautiful human like form arjuna is restored to his original nature now why did krishna show arjuna this terrible form because arjuna wanted to see it otherwise krishna never shows his universal form or any such a uh, terrifying form to any of his devotees and krishna particularly tells about his two handed form 
this form which you are seeing with your transcendental eyes cannot be understood simply by studying the Vedas, nor by undergoing serious penances, nor by charity, nor by worship. It is not by these means that I can be seen in my original two-handed form. Then what is the way to see Krishna's two-handed original form? Krishna says, only by undivided devotional service can I be understood as I am standing before you and can thus be seen directly. Only in this way can you enter into the mysteries of my understanding. So the universal form is difficult to be seen by somebody who is not a devotee. But the two-handed form of Krishna can only be seen by those who are devotees engaged in pure devotional service. This is the special thing about seeing Krishna's two-handed form. It is even more difficult to see Krishna's two-handed form than even the universal form. Now, as Srila Prabhupada explains, the personal forms of Krishna, the two-handed form and the four-handed form are completely different from the universal form. The personal forms of Krishna are actually very, very pleasing for the devotees, for everyone. It's a very pleasing form. Whereas this universal form is a very ghastly form. And the universal form is a temporary form. It is subject to this manifestation of this universe. Just like the universe is sometimes created and it exists. After it is destroyed, it doesn't exist anymore. Same way, the universal form of Krishna is sometimes visible and sometimes not visible. Sometimes seen and sometimes not seen. Whereas the Two-handed form and the four-handed form of Krishna are eternal forms. They always exist in the spiritual world. So Krishna changes from the universal form to the four-handed form to the two-handed form. What does this mean? This means that the two-handed form of Krishna is the original form of the Supreme Lord. It is from the two-handed form that the four-handed form and the universal form and all of the forms are emanating. Therefore, the two-handed form of Krishna is considered to be the original form of Krishna. Krishna concludes his instruction to Arjuna in this particular chapter of universal form. My dear Arjuna, one who is engaged in my pure devotional service free from the contaminations of all previous activities and free from mental speculation, who is friendly to every living being, certainly comes to me. So again, Krishna is uh, speaking about engaging in pure devotional service ultimately to attain Krishna's personal abode. So this theme is there throughout the Bhagavad Gita. The theme of engaging in pure devotional service and thereby preparing oneself to ultimately go to Krishna's personal abode. So that's the end of the chapter. Hare Krishna.